Hi everyone, welcome to the College Success Coalition video that will help steering teams uh, prepare for their member meeting one, which is on member activity planning. So we'd like to start out by just looking at a calendar for the year. Um, remember that um, we started out in July updating your strategic plan. So this part of the process is already finished. We've updated your strategic plan. You have an updated vision, updated goals, and updated concerns. The next step is to figure out what your county wants to do about those concerns. So you know maybe that kids aren't submitting a FAFSA, or kids aren't doing ca campus visits, or um, kids aren't taking uh, AP courses, rigorous courses in school. And so now the next question is, okay, so what are our member organizations going to do about that? So the meeting that we're prepping for today is to talk with your member organizations about what they could do to address those, uh, those, um, those, those concerns that you have. And then in January, you'll meet with your member organizations to just basically do progress reports, show and tell. This is where a lot of seeds for networking get planted as organizations start to hear what other organizations in the county are doing. So we'll do that progress reporting or, or show and tell networking in January, and then we'll come back again in May and do it. So at both the January and the May meetings, we'll be asking folks, what, what did you do in the, in the past semester, and what are you doing in the um, upcoming semester? And we're just picturing that each of your member organizations would get a, a chance to chat. Okay, so on this slide, um, as you're presenting this presentation to your member organizations, you will have filled in already the dates um, for your meetings. Um, we just talked with Dustin Bryant in Vigo County, and he actually has already done this and sent it out to his member organizations in an email. So now we know that in Vigo County, all of the member organizations already have these meeting dates on their calendar, which is wonderful. So if you don't do that ahead of time, at least at this first meeting of the year, we want to make sure that all your member organizations know when um, when the, uh, when the meetings, all four meetings are for the year. Okay, so we're talking with your member organizations and we're explaining to them that today's task is to plan and document your member organization's activities for the coming year. So um, to do that, we're just going to get them right online and we'll say, um, so that means as the steering team, you need to make sure that you're having this meeting at a place where you have internet access and that you've asked everyone to bring their laptops or their uh, their smartphones or their tablets or, or whatever so that they can actually do real work during the meeting. Um, we've heard from a lot of steering team members, not a lot, but several counties that it's hard to get member organizations to document their activities. So th we're just going to do it while they're at the meeting. So they've come to your meeting. We've asked them to get online. And um, we've taken them to this website. And we're just saying, OK, first step is click member organization login. Um, the one other thing, you could have your meeting at a place where there are stations where people can get on the internet. Uh, we have we have a lot of a lot of steering teams that will um, hold the decide to hold the meeting at the public library or in a school's computer lab or or somewhere at a work one center where there are a bank of computers that people can use. Okay, so we're getting everybody online. They log in. And then um, immediately, um, people are going to say, oh, we forget our username and password. So you'll need to remind them that if they forget their username and password, they can just click right there. And that will give them information on how to reset their, their, their password. Um, one little um, hiccup that can happen with this is that that password um, is going to um, go to them at whatever email address they used originally. Um, if they have changed their email addresses, um, then we're going to have um, to go in um, through the online system, through your system, um, and, and change that. So, um, so I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But, but just know if, if they say, oh, I'm not getting the password email, then you can ask them, you know, to have you changed your, your email address. So, okay. Um, then once they're logged in, then you're asking them to just click on our activities. So they click on that. 
And then um, we're going to ask them to edit the activities that they've, that they've entered. So you can see in this Add Edit column, there's only one link. So you can just say, look at the Add uh, Edit column, look for the icon that's there, and just click on that one. So And that will allow them to ed enter or edit um, the activities that are already there. So they click on that. And so you're pausing while everybody clicks there. And I usually ask people, please don't work ahead of us so that we're all on the same page. And then they come up to a list of their activities. So there's three tasks that they want to do, that we want them to do. Um, one is that they're going to delete activities that they will not do in the coming year. So they just go over to the right column and just click that delete button. They're going to get a message that says, do you really want to delete this? And they say yes, and poof, it's gone. Um, and then we want to edit the activities that they are going to continue doing uh, in the coming year. So if I decided I, I was going to continue to do the College Access Materials display um, in my public library, um, I would just click Edit. Um, and then when I click the Edit, the first thing I want to do is to edit the activity dates. So um, I'm going to um, go in and, and, and change the dates so that they're not last year's dates, but they're dates in the year coming up. And then the other thing I want to make sure I've done for each of the activities is I want to link each activity with a student, a scholar success program requirement if it does link. So for example, if I'm a school and one of the things that I do is I help all of my students create a graduation plan, um, I want to make sure when I go in to edit that activity that I've scrolled down to this part where I can link the activities to the scholar acti requirements and click Create Graduation Plan. Or if I'm a, a business and I'm providing internships and I've, I've got that logged in, I want to make sure that I scroll down and click Get Workplace Experience. Um, or if I'm a community foundation and I put on a program to help kids search online for uh, merit-based scholarships, you know, I want to make sure that I'm clicking that that when students participate in my activity, they're meeting one of the requirements for the, the 21st Century Scholars Program. So those two parts, we want to make sure on all the activities get edited, that we've edited the date, and we've made sure that we've connected the activity with a scholar requirement if indeed it does it does meet that, that requirement. Um, one little thing to remember that to meet the scholar activity requirement, um, the students must have completed the requirement when they walk out of the event. So if I do a training on how to take the SAT, that does not meet the requirement that the kids take the SAT because when the kids walk out of my training, they, they would not have um, taken the SAT yet. So, okay, not that the training is a bad activity, but it, the kids will have not met the requirement um, when they've walked out the door. Okay, um, then we're going to, so we've, we've removed any activities we're not going to do anymore. We've edited activities um, that we are going to do. And then we want to say, are there any new activities that you want to do? You know, when we met with you in July, we're saying to the member organizations, when we met with you in July, we asked you to talk with the folks in your business or your organization about doing additional activities. And so if you have a new activity to add, um, just click on Add a New Activity. So when folks click on that, the first thing they're going to be asked to do is see is a page that looks like this. And we just want to remind people that what we need them to do is the title and the description. They do not have to do the evaluation. They do not have to do um, the to-do list for the activity. But we do need to get in an activity title, something that's short and descriptive, descriptive and um, and an activity description. And this really needs to be as well written as possible so that when kids are searching for activities um, in the SSP system, that they know what that activity is all about. Um, as you know, some of your member organizations have put in an activity title that says something like flower power as the title. They know what that means, but we don't know what that means. And then when we read the description, the, all it says is, you know, students will come to the library. And we don't know what they're doing or why they're coming or, or anything. So we, we really want to emphasize with your member organizations in this paragraph that they should discuss 
what they're going to do, who's going to be involved, when it will happen. Um, so it's kind of the who, what, where, when, and how of, of the activity. Um, okay, then also know that if they have linked the activity with one of the SSP requirements for the 21st Century Scholars, someone from Learn More is going to read the activity and approve it before it will be part of the searchable database that kids will be looking at um, to find activities that they can do. Um, so again, we want to make sure that that title and description is, is really well written. Um, because if learn more, when Learn More gets it, if their staff can't figure out what the activity is, then they're going to be sending an email to the member organization and asking them to revise um, the description and, and all that. So, so again, I think it's just going to you know help everybody if from the get go the title and the uh, and the description make a lot of sense. Okay, and then just kind of going on, we're, we're telling folks. You do not have to uh, create an evaluation for your activity. That's a tool you can use if you want to, but you don't have to do it. And you do not have to have a to-do list. It's a tool that's there if you want to use it and print out a to-do list for the activity, um, but you don't have to do it. So, okay. Um, so, um, the other thing we want to say to folks is that um, we have some resources for activity ideas if you, you, know, if you want to think about it. So you might say, you know, one of our targeted concerns is that kids don't submit the FAFSA. Um, if you want to search for some ideas about what your organization could do to help kids do that, um, here's some, some resources. So the first one is on the College Success Coalition website. Um, you, the member organizations can go in and search all of the activities, the, the uh, 3,000 activities that are now in the database. Um, to look for activities that they might do. So to do that, here you, they would go to learnmoreindiana.org slash CSC, then over in the left-hand column, click on Activity Search. And what we suggest is that the organizations go to this uh, blank that says Implementing Organization Type. They're, th when they click that, there will be a drop-down box of like 30 different types of organizations and then they can select the one that matches them and see what those organizations are doing. So if I'm a mayor's office, I would do the drop-down box, you know, find local government, click that. And then if I wanted to do something around FAFSA, I would type FAFSA in this top box and then hit the search button. And then all across the state, I can see what are mayor's offices doing about FAFSA. Um, so, you know, in some of these, like if I were to search career development, uh, for public libraries, there's like 25 different activities that come up. Um, some of them, there may be fewer activities, but um, um, but it's just a way for folks to, to look at things. I think this is the most comprehensive database anywhere um, that I've ever seen um, that's searchable where people can search for activity ideas. So if you're only going to share one resource, this is the one I'd share with them. Okay, then there's also the Learn More campaigns. So you can remind people that there's idea in the campaign materials that you know they received in August, um, and to kind of read through those materials and see if there's uh, if that gives them some ideas of things to do. And just a reminder, um, you know, you could even highlight here are you know some things that we've noted uh, organizations doing in these campaigns. So August through November is College Go Week. Um, they might sponsor a day, uh, a college application day. So if they're a Boy Scout troop, they have a lot of seniors. They might say, you know, let's have a college application party. You know, bring your college application. We'll sit down. We'll fill them all out together. Um, they could sponsor campus visits, a, a college fair. Um, that I know a lot of you are are doing a college and career fair right now um, in your counties. Um, the Drive Your Life uh, Career Exploration Game. Um, they could play with kids. Um, that's an online game. Um, the uh, they could do an SAT ACT prep class. Um, or a career fair. Um, so, you know, just sharing some of these ideas that get kind of the creativity going and them thinking about what could they do. Um, uh, in learning on Cash for College Week, um, just, you know, some ideas that you could share. And again, you can edit these slides if there are ideas that, that you like that you think would be cool for your county, you know, just put them in here to plant some seeds. Um, and then Career Ready is, um, that's the new campaign that happens in the, in the summer. 
and it's um, helping kids getting get getting real world experience uh, to prepare and explore their future careers. So summer jobs related to their career interests, internships, shadowing, volunteering, uh, career field trips, maybe a brownie scout would do. Um, yeah, so uh, different ideas there. So then the third um, thing is to uh, search the Scholar Success Program activity website. Um, this is uh, uh, very new. Um, matter of fact, we're still waiting for Learn More to push, push the, give us the okay to push the, the launch button, which I keep saying will happen any day, and I really believe that it's going to happen any day. We're just reminding and waiting for, um, for the go-ahead to do that. Um, but then as a reminder, um, if your member organizations go to asainstitute.org, slash SSP, I think when this gets launched, that will change to uh, learnmoreindiana.org slash SSP. And then they would just click on Students and Parents, Find Scholar Success Program Activities. And then um, on the next page, they would say, you know, show us what organizations are doing in our county around helping kids plan their graduation plan or getting workplace experience. Um, and and um, or, or not even narrowing it down. They could say, show us across the state what's happening, you know, to help kids meet these requirements. Um, okay, so, um, and that's something, this just popped into my head, but as a steering team member, I think what I would do is just search for each of these and make sure in my county that there's stuff going on where my 21st century scholars can meet these requirements. So, for example, if you were to go in and search for workplace experience and nobody is providing internships or job shadowing or, or that, that may be then a place um, where you know you need to get some of your member organizations involved in that. So, okay. Um, this is what the results look like um, when, you, when you do that Scholar Success Program search. So it'll give them the name and the date of the activity, which requirements um, that activity is meeting. And then there's the description. So if they have a, you know, we need to make sure they have a good description. And then who's implementing it and, and uh, who to contact to get more information. So, okay, so three different ways to search for activities. Um, and then the, the final part is, is giving people work time. So we've put the reminders of, of what they're to do. So we're deleting activities your organization will no longer sponsor, edit activities you plan to continue, and add new activities. So this is just a working meeting. Um, we're kind of, you know, it's all about activities, getting things kicked off. Um, I would also remind people that when they come to the January meeting, we're going to be doing show and tell. And any activities that they've got planned for the first semester, um, you know, you'll want to hear how they went. And then you'll want them to highlight in January the activities that are coming up second semester. So it just adds a little bit of accountability. And it's those meetings, those show and tell meetings are, are really energetic. I mean, you can... You know that you know before we started recording, each of the counties shared the things that you were doing, and it just energized me to think about all these you know cool things that you're doing. And um, you know, I just think as people start reporting on their work, there's a lot of energy that gets built. So okay, so we're thinking. Uh, so we've you know that's the end of the meeting, and we've um, given people work time. And when they've got their their member activities you know all updated and planned out, then then off they go. So, okay, let's just see um, what questions you have and anything else that you want to bring up um, about your coalition. We had great reports before we started recording, um, but any questions or concerns? I'm not seeing any hands up. Debbie, any questions that you've had typed in that... Um, I do see one hand up. Um, let's go to Julie Garber. Julie, question? Uh, is it for me, Julie Garber? No, I've got a hand up. Nope. Sue, can you hear me now? I can hear you, yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. It's, it's Julie. Um, I, I, I didn't uh, wedge myself in there to talk about Wabash County, but... Um, but please do. Yeah, well, <laughs> we are very poor at meeting, but we, we're we a very close-knit county, and we the same people are doing activities all together. So um, between the Y program for the 529 Promise uh, Wabash County and 
the community foundation effort to do uh, financial literacy using the college cost estimator as a as a curricular tool for teaching about college uh, cost. Uh, and we and Wabash City Schools have a new officer for college success. Oh, cool! Who works with uh, the whole pipeline, kindergarten through twelfth grade. So uh, together, we're we're working um, hard on financial literacy. Very cool. And we those materials as they as we develop them. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, that's one of the things I love about the coalition is just the the sharing of ideas. I know when you guys came up with the Wabash Promise, um, I know that there have been other counties that have pilot, piloted that with um, with the commission. But we also have counties that have just talked about you know doing it and and. So I know we have you know counties that are in the, the thinking stages in the, in the beginnings of the planning stages for how to replicate what you guys did in Wabash County, which is totally cool. So you know, one of our one of the challenges now is to in, uh, try to incentivize and get parent engagement and uh, school engagement. So those are challenges ahead and kind of exciting to work on. Good, great. So um, yeah, and it, it occurs to me um, too. I'm going to go ahead and mute you, Julie, so we don't get the background noise. But um, it occurs to me that you know I, we didn't hit start hitting record this time until um, until after we did all of our sharing. Um, but next time, if you wouldn't mind, I think that's probably the richest part of the discussion is just hearing all the cool things that you guys are doing. Um, next time, I think if you wouldn't mind, I'll I'll hit the record button before you start doing your your reports. And, and also, let's make sure then that everybody calls in on a phone so that we make sure that everybody's got a microphone so that we get all the reports. Um, but, but yeah, just fabulous. I'm so pumped listening to what you guys have talked about. Um, it's just, just awesome. So, OK, let's see if we have any other hands up. Uh, and I am not seeing any. Debbie, before we close, are there, is there anything that's come in through the written comments that we need to share with everyone? Nope, nope. All the written comments were things that we have already addressed. So um, I'm really excited to work with everybody though this year. So make sure you give me a buzz. <laughs> that sounds good. You know, it's fun to work with Debbie. Um, I, I, I think you guys have probably picked up on how cheerful she always is. Um, but she loves this work, and it's just fun to work with somebody who loves what she's doing. So um, please make sure you, you call her and, and use her because um, she, she loves it, don't you, Debbie? <laughs> she just muted herself. <laughs> she does. Yes. Yes, I yes, absolutely do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, very good. Thanks, everybody. Keep up the good work um, as you're implementing your activities. And, it, you know, call us if you need help. And um, we'll talk to everybody at the next webinar, which will be in December. We don't know the date yet, um, but in December we'll be setting up that those show and tell meetings that happen um, in January and May. So, okay. Thanks, one, everybody. One more. One okay. more late question. Yes. Yes. Uh, Troy asked if um, can we hold multiple meetings so that we can get as many members involved as possible. It would cover the same content, but we have multiple members who are in one city and then multiple that are in another. Um, and she's new in Lawrence County. Right. So it's Troy Barksdale. That. Yeah. Yes. In Lawrence. Yes, I think that is a wonderful idea. I love the creativity in that thought. Um, absolutely, that that would be fine. Um, the I'm just kind of thinking as I'm answering this question. The one thing, though, is the benefit of having everybody together is that then everybody gets to hear about what everybody else is doing. So if you're going to have multiple activities, and I actually, in one initiative that I did, I did that. I had one meeting during the day for people that could get away from work and meet during the day or weren't working. And then I had the exact same meeting at night uh, for people that you know couldn't get away from work but could meet at night. Um, so if, if you do that, I think it would be important to um, have some way to share between the two groups. So maybe just if you're having a morning meeting just to kind of type up all the cool things people are doing and then make copies and distribute it at night. And then same thing, you could email, you know, the, the night 
the night activities to the day people. So, but yeah, that's a great idea. It, 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 you know, the more people we can get involved, the better. I love it. Good, good idea. Okay, anything else, Debbie? And thank you, Troy. Anything else, Debbie? Yeah, no, I think, no, I think you got it all covered. Okay, very good. Call Debbie, call us, work hard, and we'll talk to everybody in December. Thanks, everyone.